um, maybe about four or five videos ago, I was talking about tone on YouTube. What we should do as black men and black women and black children when we come out on YouTube or any of these websites when we're giving our opinion. We should think about what we're saying. We need to watch the words and language. Now, I think for the most part, after 160 something videos, I think I've been on an even, even kill. You know, I, I haven't said anything that's disrespectful, vulgar, at least in my opinion. I'm getting responses from people who identify as being white on a profile that say they're white. And for those who, who are black or say they're black, making threats against me and saying all kinds of derogatory things. And also, before I go any further, I'm going to use some very coarse language. So if you have any children or anybody under a certain age you don't want to hear this, please escort them out, out the room or watch this video a little bit later. But as I was saying... You have people who are making threats and doing all kinds of rude things to us, copying our channels, putting up false profiles, and it seems to me YouTube don't want to do anything about these different websites, but yet they're ready to flag our videos as inappropriate. So what I'm going to say, brothers and sisters, if, it come, if my videos is flagged, if my channel is taken down, I'm going to say this to you. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. But I can't keep doing this any longer. I can't keep trying to trying to stay stay in the middle of the road or trying to look in the best in people. But at some point, we in our community going to start dealing with those people who come from outside of our community who do us no good. That means police officers, teachers, doctors, or these extremists who are part of these militia groups, and even within our communities, quote unquote, so called thugs or gang banks, however you want to call it, I call them terrorists. Because things are going on in our community, we've let, we let go on for, for way too long. I have no love for these quote unquote gang bangers, I call them terrorists. Because you, just, you, you hate yourself so much, you're terrorizing your own people. You're shooting down innocent people, whether they be young or old. You got businesses afraid to come in our community or don't or using what's going on in our community as excuse not to come into our community. So you're keeping jobs away from your brothers and sisters who need it and from yourself. You won't go into another community or mess with a group of people who terrorize your people, but you're going to terrorize your own. And don't realize that you're giving law enforcement cover to do questionable things. And for those who are in these militias, who sit in the forest reserve or in certain parts of the country or the community plotting how many black men and black women and children they're going to take out you guys are cowards you should be you should be dealt with the same I turn on the TV I hear about a little 13 year old boy getting shot playing basketball the other day I turn on the TV I hear about a guy in um, Norway shooting up a bunch of kids now, a white racist who's a, who's a militia, who's in a militia is no different than a black man or black woman in a gang in, in, in this country. Y'all terrorizing innocent people because all they want to do is live their lives in peace. When I see shit like this, it makes me want to go get my 9mm, get my, my, my broke, broke, broke ass body up in my car, and go out and do a little hunting. I'm going to tell you something. When I find my weapon, I'm not going to miss. I'm not shooting the main. I'm not shooting the cripple. I'm shooting the kill. Yes, I said it. Because this country had no problem sending me to Iraq. They had no problem me kicking doors in, blowing up shit, shooting at people. They had no problem with that. But I come back home, I'm, we getting terrorized from within and from not our community. And we can't do shit because you got politicians. We've gotten bad with these big businesses with NRA saying keep them niggas from having guns. I've talked to brothers who are in law enforcement. I've talked to brothers who served in, in the military, whether it be Vietnam vets, Desert Storm vets, Iraq and Afghanistan, or brothers and sisters who just did they they time and just got their military training. I'm gonna let people know once you get that training, it never shuts off. Like I said, with my injuries, I'm still a, I could still be dangerous. 
but I can still train some train somebody or change that back. I can tell people how to do certain things and it can be done. Yes, brothers and sisters, I'm saying it because I'm tired of I'm tired of people coming out of community doing shit. Here it is when a young brother or sister body is found in the middle of the night, people feel say gang related. Everything gang related. I'm gonna tell you how I know this. Get in your car if you feel comfortable and safe tonight or any other night. Drive down the street. I guarantee you you see the number of white police officers or you see white men and white women driving in and out of your community or white Hispanics driving in and out of your community or white Arabs driving in and out of your community. And I, I guarantee you a lot of these murders, they have something to do with it. But because you call the police department and law enforcement say, well, you know that lady down the street at such and such address, she called and said she saw you. You get a knock on the door. You didn't see nothing. Or the police officer tell the, the, the game banger, yeah, you know that old man down the street or that young brother, he walked right there, he called the police on y'all, y'all better deal with him. See, it's a business for them. See, these prisons they building out in the suburban areas or the rural areas, this is income. We're like cattle to them. This is why I say we in our community need to start dealing with this shit ourselves. Trust me. Trust me when I say, believe me, if I want to take out a whole city block, I probably could. Because I've been trained to do that shit. Because the most Excuse me, most citizens ain't paying attention to what their surroundings are. I could be in my car point. I could say that guy got a weapon on him. How you know? I remember one night me and an ex girlfriend was in the car. And I said, That dude got a gun on him. Look at that. How you know? I said, Look at him. When he moved, she saw the imp. She said, How did you recognize it? Where well, he's standing. Because he's uncomfortable. He's afraid that it's going to drop or he's going to shoot himself. Well, why don't the police stop him? Because they don't want to get involved. She said, by you seeing it, how do you feel? I said, right then and there, he, he ain't fit to live because he terrorizes his own community. And then she's going to say, what if he's feel he's a, he's under, he's, his life in danger? We'll have his ass in the house and we'll stay, stay on the corner at 11 o'clock at night. Well, how do you feel about these white people coming in the community doing the night, Harvey? I don't like it. Why? It's because when I go into their community, they watch me from the time I drive in to the time I drive out. And then if I'm following all the rules and laws, they still pull me over. So why don't we do the same for them? Here it is when a white man commits a crime, a heinous crime. And let me, let me, let me phrase that. Well, you know when, the, when the news cameras don't show the face of a suspect or say they race, you know they're a white man or white woman. Or a white Hispanic, or a white Asian, or a white Arab. But if a brother is in vicinity of something, they put his image plastered up. You just in prejudice, an entire group of people saying, "Honey, you go another black man. Told you about them people. Make sure they don't come in our community." This is what they do, and like fools, we don't say anything. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this right now. I have no love for a black man or black woman who terrorizes their own community. They ain't fit to walk this planet. Because when, and then those brothers and sisters who defend them, you should be right along with them. And those white men and white women who come on YouTube, these different sites, talking all that shit. When they big and bad, put your image out on YouTube. Or better yet, come in the black community and try to pull the shit you pull up. If you big and bad, I'm tired of this shit. I'm tired of turning on the TV. I'm tired of turning on the radio. I'm tired of reading newspapers. I'm tired of going on the internet and hearing about black on black crime. It's no such thing as black on black crime. You know they never say white on white crime. We get tired and fed with all the most negative images imaginable. But at some point, we as black men and black women in our community need to start handling our business. That means you need to discipline your children. Fuck what the system say. Because when you get 18, 19 years old, they turn around and blame you either way it go. A white man and white woman come in your community at night and they doing dirty shit, you send them, you send them home in, in body bags. 
Yes, I said it. I'm tired of turning on TV and seeing these, these people do the shit they do to us. And you got these handkerchief head Negroes defending people using the word nigger is just a word. I'm tired of black people saying we're just as racist. No, we're not. There's no such thing as a black racist. Here it is. They're trying to take our fucking voting rights away from my brothers and sisters. And we ain't saying shit. How many of y'all know that Coca-Cola, Kraft, Pfizer, Exxon Mobil, and some, I think there's a few other companies sponsoring this, this, this pack group called Alec. They're sponsoring this voters, this voter rights thing. They're trying to go across the country and strip our vote, our rights away. This is why they got Acorn out of the way. This is why they lied and set up Acorn. And the media, the media, everybody, all forms of media went to sleep on it. You got motherfuckers right now plotting to come in our community and shoot us up. How many brothers and sisters have we heard within the last four years been found mysteriously shot, cut up, hung from trees, raped, mutilated? But law enforcement say, oh, it was a gang initiation. Oh, come on. But see, if we don't get a handle of our brothers in the, in the community, those who terrorize in our communities, they're going to always push this shit off on gangs. Y'all know I'm, I'm speaking the truth. Every community in, in, in black community in the country got these issues. Why in the fuck are we allowing this? See these punks that's coming on YouTube typing shit up, threatening us. These motherfuckers are cowards. They won't put their face up there. Because they know they wrong. They don't want to risk losing their job or a black man or black woman like me and you come up saying, okay dude, you want to talk shit now? Do it now. They won't do it. They're afraid. Yes, I'm advocating you take these bastards out. Getting people have no problem with me going to a foreign country killing people or shooting up people, blowing up people, or other soldiers or Marines doing that. They love us when we do that. They like, God bless America. You gotta fight for our freedoms. So what's the difference between fighting for the country freedom and black men, if I'm not mistaken, as a part of America? Shouldn't we have the same rights and have the same desires as anybody else? Here it is, the, the NRA talking about Second Amendment rights, but where were they at when that brother, I forget his name, went to Washington, went to the Supreme Court to get us, get have us get the ability to be able to have weapons in our home or cover, or carry and conceal. Notice in our community where blacks at, the murder rates and gun violence is, is, is disproportionate. But if you go to any other place in this country, any other state, they got to cover and conceal or let the homeowners uh, protect their property, their family. Crime is down. Y'all remember happened in, in Texas where the guy saw his neighbor house getting broke in and he called the dispatch and dispatch told him don't do anything. He still shot the people. There's two guys in the back. He didn't do no jail time. Because they said he was doing what he's supposed to. He was protecting his neighborhood, his neighbor's property. But you and I do that. We're vigilantes. We took the law in our own hand. We're, we're thugs, we're criminals. Ask yourself, why is that? Because he mean we be fucking up the balance. We be keeping those potential criminals from going to jail. Because prison is a big business. This is why they put these sub these prisons in suburban rural locations. They're giving jobs to these little white boys and little white girls. While your kids out here getting put in cemeteries. At some point, we got to realize that we either we're going we gonna to stand up and say enough is enough. Or we might just say, you know what? Might as well just go ahead and get it over and shoot me in the head. So I apologize to those who think my words are blunt and think I'm think I'm wrong. But I'm tired of turning on TV and seeing these images. I'm tired of people making threats to us. At some point, we gotta say enough is enough. 